Hello everyone and welcome to this, my video on the bisection method, part of the, well yes, Year 11 Mathematical Methods Units 1 and 2 course, but pretty much maths throughout the world, A-level and then some. My name's Darren from Maths Guru, thank you very much for finding me. Here we go, Maths Guru, my little corner of the interweb. Yes, I have some presence on YouTube, but pretty much everything else is on my website. Absolutely free to sign up. All the videos are there, they are all sequenced, they are basically downloadable lesson notes, VCAA exam questions, summary books, the works, they're all over there. Well, the summary books for general maths methods is coming, but hopefully this video will be useful. Now behind me you will see it says learning objectives and basically it just says know how to use the bisection method to solve cubics. This is pretty late in the content of the chapter that we are dealing with, which is actually chapter six of the Cambridge textbook. And thank you very much Cambridge for letting me use your stuff. Now, obviously, I always recap, but there is a lot of stuff to recap, okay? Basically, we have so far looked at all sorts of ways of basically finding solutions of polynomials, cubics, all sorts of different things, yeah? And we've what did we use? We use the uh, synthetic division, long division, um, equating coefficients, uh, re-expression, and I pretty much thought I told you, oh, we're done now. Well, apparently not. There is one other way, and it's actually using an algorithm. Now, those of you who like patterns and stories and, and do this followed by do that followed by do that, this video is going to absolutely work for you. Why? Because it's going to make life so, so much easier. But what I want to do is sort of go into the specifics in just a moment. There is a little bit of a note here that basically we're also going to deal with something a little bit later on called pseudocode. Now, pseudocode, again, is just a way of writing an algorithm out in a semi-formal computer language. It isn't a computer language. Those of you who are doing Python or programming, chill. It's 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 You're going to get a little bit of an advantage, but hopefully if I teach this well, everyone will. Now... We are very lucky that actually all of the work we've done so far, there are pretty much whole number solutions to all of the cubics and the quartics and whatever else we've given you. Yes, so there are linear factors. All of these cross through our crossing points in those beautiful places like 2 and 0 and 4 or whatever else. But what if it doesn't? What do you do if actually it doesn't? Well, ultimately, you probably turn around and say, well, I would just use solve on my CAS calculator. And I'd be like, yes, yes, I know, I know, I know. And actually, everything we're about to do requires a calculator. So if I were you, grab your CAS. Doesn't matter whether you've got the TI Inspire or the class pad. Grab your CAS and, and sort of play along. Because the more you get used to this, the quicker you get. And I have seen this on exams all of the time. So here is an example of a, what is that, cubic? Yep, my eyesight's failing. But there is an example of a cubic. Now, when I fire up desmos.com, and it's easy for me to use Desmos, uh, or you use your CAS, I have a bit of an issue. Because what I notice is that root, that crossing point of my x-axis, is at minus 1.288. That is not a whole number value. Yes, again, you can use your calculator. We could have put that in and solved it, and now it will become my calculator. But what if we were asked to use this bisection method, this, this algorithm to be able to do it? Well... I thought I'd come and sort of say to you, well, hold on, if you do use your CAS, I hate to tell you this, this is what comes out. And bearing in mind methods is all about exact values. As I've said to my students over and over again, all well and good using a CAS calculator to try and find the points of intersection, but your CAS will not give you an exact value on the graph screen. It gives you a decimal. That's okay, you can go back and you can put it into here, but suddenly, yuck, we have that there. So, life becomes more complicated. Mm, not very nice, really? No. Can we guess and check? 100% we can guess and check. And that's what the bisection method does. We will generally always give you a question. And here is a question, and we will say, find the solutions to that there using the bisection method. And we will have to tell you that there is a solution somewhere between two values. Now, what we know with the example that we've got here is that cross is somewhere between negative 2 and negative 1. So the question will tell you that there is a solution between negative 2 and negative 1. And we have to try and basically guess what x value is giving a y value of 0. And that is probably the most important point here. You are guessing x values that will give you a y value as close to zero as you possibly can, because that's what a root is. That's what a solution to this is, yeah? Right, happy with that so far? 
here we go. I'm going to talk visually a little bit about what this process actually does, because if you understand it visually, the rest of it sort of makes a lot of sense. So